is the man in black. I'm very happy to step over from the sound stage of suspense. Stand in for my fellow scare master of ceremonies, Peter Lorry. Mr. Lorry had to attend a special conclave of the International Association of Witches, Goons, and Creeps, of which he is a charter member. So I am here in his place, opening the doors of the Mystery Playhouse. Tonight, the Mystery Playhouse has been fortunate enough to secure the services of that light-hearted raconteur of murder, horror, and the supernatural, the laughing boy of the inner sanctum, Raymond. Raymond's been telling about the horrible things that happened to other people for a long time now, and getting a huge bang out of it. But tonight, the tables are turned, and he finds himself on the receiving end, which seems like poetic justice indeed. I think it might prove interesting to find out how Raymond's much vaunted sense of humor survives the acid test. So follow me to the home of the squeaking door, little house of a thousand horrors, the inner sanctum. Good evening, friends. This is your host, Raymond. Welcome to the squeaking door of the inner sanctum. For those of you who write in to find out why our door squeaks so much, I guess now is a good time as any to explain that the hinges are rusty with dried blood. Through that door pass the most beautiful ghouls in the world. Won't you come in? <laughs> well, friends, are you ready? Good. Now remember, if you must scream, do it with your mouth closed so you won't annoy the rest of your family. You know, you don't need dark old houses or murky graveyards to feel the chilly presence of being from the other world. Uh, last week, just after I completed my broadcast, I was called to the telephone. And I picked up the receiver I heard. Hello, is that you, Raymond? Yes. Are you going to be at home tonight? Uh, yes, why do you ask? Because I'm going to drop by. Something I want to ask you about. Try to be alone. Uh, who are you? Don't you remember me? Well, the voice is familiar, but I can't quite place it. I'm Gideon Blake. I'll see you later, Ray. Goodbye. Now, there's nothing unusual about a call like that, except one thing. Ten years ago, my friend Gideon Blake was killed. <laughs> I was sure that call was some joke. I remember laughing about it as I sat down in my living room with sandwich and glass of milk. But uh, later that night, I must have dozed off. I remember being awakened by the tower clock chiming. It was midnight. Somewhere a cat howled against the moaning wind that had sprung up. A strange chill and a shudder through my body. The front door must have blown open. I went to see... Standing there was Gideon Blake. Good evening, Raymond. Blake, you shouldn't be so surprised. I told you I was coming. Yes. You've changed so. It's been a long time. More than ten years, I believe. But I... I don't understand. You were burned to death. How on earth did you come back? There are many things which you will never understand while you're alive. And on this earth. Why did you come here? To give you... This piece of paper. Hmm? What's on it? The names of four persons. They are alive now. In a short time, they will all be dead. I looked at him carefully as he talked. He looked hideous, ugly, with horrible burns on his face. The man had the look, touched the very smell of death. 
Good night, Raymond. I looked at the slip of paper my friend Gideon had given me. There were four names. Stella Marlowe. Robert Lane. Amelia Cardway. Raymond Edward Johnson. The first three names I didn't know. The last was very familiar to me. It was my own name. No, thanks. What about that piece of paper I gave you? How'd you get it? I told you. Look, I'm a cop, Raymond. When I believe a story like that one, you can call the little men in the white coats. Oh. No, I'm sorry I bothered you, Inspector. Let's forget it. <laughs> I can't forget it. Why? Because Blake wrote that note. Are you sure? We checked the handwriting. It's his. So are the fingerprints we found on it. How do you figure it? I don't yet. I am waiting for you I've to told you everything. Hey, wait a minute. Hmm? Maybe Blake's really alive. He got burned to death ten years ago. Are you sure? Positive. We checked every angle of his death at that time because we thought he might have been murdered. Murdered? I never heard about that. Oh, Blake was with the department. You remember? Working on a homicide case. The Laura Wilcox case, you remember? Oh, uh, vaguely. We figured someone might have polished him off, but nobody did. It was an accident. Was this Wilcox murder ever solved? Well, uh, no. Maybe those names I gave you had something to do with the Wilcox case. Why don't you check with I did. None of your names figure. These people never heard of the Wilcox murder. Hey, Inspector. Yeah, what do you want, Gibson? Hey, weren't you interested in some information about a dame named Stella Marlowe? Yeah. She was the first name on that list you gave me, Ray. Hmm. Uh, what about her? I just came through on the ticker. Stella Marlowe was found dead. Murdered. <laughs> I just got in. I've been down to the police library studying the file on the Wilcox case. All right, forget about that. Now, listen. I want you to lock your door and all the windows. I'm sending down a red-headed cop to guard you. What? Don't let any dark-haired guy into your house, even if he's your own best friend. What's this all about? We're dealing with a homicidal maniac. The body of Stella Marlowe was dismembered. Dismembered? Tell my man to call me at headquarters when he arrives. Goodbye. Goodbye. After I hung up the phone, I noticed the little black box on the living room table. How it got there, I don't know, because my house was locked all day. I undid the black ribbon, opened it. What I saw inside fascinated and horrified me. It was a human hand. Suddenly a thought clicked in my mind. I recognized something on me. Inspector, this is Ray Johnson. Yeah, what is it? Did you ever find out what happened to Stella Wilcox? Huh? She's the stepdaughter of the murdered Laura Wilcox. Why do you want to know? Well, she was suspected of the murder for a time. Listen, will you drop that angle? Will you just answer one or two questions? Did the killer dismember the whole body in the Stella Marlowe murder? Just the hands. Fine. Did she have on a large diamond ring, the third finger on the left hand? Yes. The friends say she wore it all the time, but how do you... I've got it here. Someone sent me a hand with a ring on it. What? And get this. There's a name engraved inside the ring. The name is Laura Wilcox. What? There's a scar on the thumb. There was a scar on the left thumb of Stella Wilcox's print in your file. I took a fingerprint. The prints on the hand and the fingerprints of Stella Wilcox are identical. Are you sure? Yes. Stella Marlowe and Stella Wilcox are the same person. Did you find anything else there? Yes. Black hair under the fingernails. I'm coming down to your place as fast as I can get there. Goodbye. Goodbye. The front door slammed the second after I hung up. I turned around. Coming toward me was a man with jet black hair. You know, I can say sudden horrible death when it happens to other people, but when it happened to me, 
Well, the man with the jet black hair looked quietly at me and said, I'm Robert Lane. You're Raymond Edward Johnson, I believe? Yes. Inspector Bell spoke to me about you. Can I sit down? What do you make of all this? I don't know what to make of it. You heard what happened to Stella Marlowe? Yes. Did you know that's not her real name? Yes, she was the stepdaughter of Laura Wilcox, but uh, I do know. I think I know more about this than you imagine. Is your name really Robert Lane? Why? There was a chauffeur in the Wilcox home, a man named Lowry. I wonder if there's no harm in telling you now. Yeah, I'm that chauffeur. And Amelia Cardway? She was Mrs. Wilcox's maid. No, Johnson, the murder of Stella didn't come exactly as a surprise to me. Why? She poisoned her stepmother with the help of the maid, Amelia Cardway. But why am I involved in all this? Let's not fool each other. Somehow you discovered that Stella murdered her stepmother. But after ten years, you can't dig up any evidence, and you know it. So you invent this wild story about Gideon Blake. Just the right sort of psychological scare to frighten the two women into making a move that'll give them away. Very clever. Just a moment. What color is the hair of Amelia Cardway? Blonde. Pretty shade of blonde, in fact. Very attractive girl ten years ago. Oh, what's in the box? I advise you not to look. I rarely follow the advice of other people. I... Oh. Where'd you get this? Someone left it here this evening. That ring. Old Lady Wilcox gave that to Stella on her 18th birthday. That... The hand of Stella. I understand why you asked about the hair, Johnson. The hair under the fingernails is black. Just like mine. Mm Mm-hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if an analysis showed that it was mine. And you killed it. The point is that I don't intend to give up my life to amuse you and your little crime hobby. What do you mean? You're going to learn about crime, Raymond, through a direct personal experience. I'm going to kill you. Don't go in here. He was a powerful man. His blow dazed me. I struck my head against the furniture. I lay down on the floor dazed. Like a slow motion picture, I saw Lane approach and lean over me. A long knife in his hand. You didn't expect to stir up this hornet's nest, did you? Crime and murder is very amusing, isn't it? Well, you'll find out just how funny it is. His arm raised his arm. Not powerless. He was driving the knife down. Suddenly. Let go. go. Grab my hand. I did. Did you? Did you, Blake? Yes. Ah! I heard him scream. Somewhere the door slammed. And I blacked out. Here. Here, get up. Right. Mm-hmm. There you are. Uh, you're okay now. Come on, get up, get up. Uh, Inspector Doyle. Hey, what happened here? We found you on the floor, out like a light. Uh, it was Lane, the Wilcox chauffeur. He tried to kill me. Lane? Lane's dead. There's the body. Huh? Did uh, you kill him, Ray? No. Where does Amelia Cardway live? Oh. A few miles from here, why? We've got to get over there right away. She killed the old lady, and she might have killed Stella, too. <laughs> see how Amelia Cardway could have done it. Maybe you'll tell me next that Gideon Blake did it. I don't know. Gideon Blake didn't have a hair on his head. Oh, besides, he's dead. I never arrest a dead man for the crime of murder. You can't get confessions on him. Perhaps Lane did go to see Stella shortly before she was killed. They were all in this together. Yeah? They told you they didn't know each other to protect themselves. Now, that still doesn't explain how the hand got to your place or why Gideon Blake came back from the dead or why we found those black hairs under the fingernails. Yeah, I've got an idea about the hand. Yeah? I think it was dismembered so that you would never know that Stella Marlowe was Stella Wilcox. Huh? She changed her appearance, but she couldn't change her fingerprint. Well, then who left it at your place and why? And why should you be on the murder list? Don't remind me of that, please. Well... Here's Amelia Cardway's cottage. Maybe we'll get some of the answers here. Come on. Ah! What? Inspector. Help! Help! You hear that? Yeah, yeah. Come on, follow me, right? Inspector Doyle had his gun out and was running into the house. I followed a few steps behind. In a moment, I was in the living room. Doyle was standing there. Well, what happened? Why did you scream for help? 
In an old chair sat what was once an attractive woman. The blonde hair was streaked with gray, but the face was a mask of terror. I recognized her from the picture in the police file. It was the former maid of Laura Wilcox, Amelia Cardway. Yes, Mrs. Wilcox, in just a minute. Come in, Mrs. Wilcox. What's the matter with her? Oh, yes, yeah, she's cracked your delirious. Uh, just keep sitting there like that. Mumble. You can't live with secrets. Someone will find out. I'm glad. Glad they found out. Now she'll never come to see me again, ever. Yeah, well, who came to see you? Mrs. Wilcox. Uh, I didn't want to give her that medicine. I knew it was poison, but Stella made me. She made me. And so did me, the chauffeur. Getting out of the chair, Inspector. Uh, uh, look, there's a knife in her back. Miss Cardwell. There she is, at the top of the stairs. Mrs. Wilcox. Where? At the top of the stairs, Inspector. Look, it's Laura Wilcox. I'll tell everything, Mrs. Wilcox. We were all in on it together. Tell her, the chauffeur and me. I didn't want to do it. Forgive me for... I'm going upstairs. You look after her, right? <laughs> The moment he reached the bottom steps, Mrs. Wilcox disappeared. I stooped over the cardway woman. She was dead. A burst of pistol fire came from the upstairs part of the house. A moment later, Inspector Doyle came tumbling down the stairs, the gun still in his hand. He was unconscious. I looked up. At the top of the stairs stood Mrs. Laura Wilcox. She said nothing, but calmly came down holding the poker she had struck the inspector with. She bent down, took out the knife from the body of the dead Amelia Cartwright. I was too startled, too frightened to move. Suddenly the woman took off her hat, her wig, and there stood Gideon Blake. You'd better go now, Raymond. I don't understand that disguise. Look there. The entrance to the dining room. Fire. Yes. Fire. You'd best leave at once. Those flames are spreading rapidly. Take Inspector Doyle with you. Blake, you hurry. Yours is the last name on my list, you know. He didn't have to say any more. I dragged the inspector through the door. Gideon Blake turned, smiled at me. And walked directly into the flames. That was the last I ever saw. I found the missing pieces of the jigsaw puzzle. Mm -hmm. Laura Wilcox was a twin sister of Gideon Blake. We uh, dug up the birth records. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's why she looked so familiar. And that's why he murdered the three people. Because they killed his sister. He faked his own death in order to carry out justice himself. Yes, but that uh, still doesn't explain why I was brought into it. Uh -huh. a bit. <laughs> That's simple. He wanted us to know what was going on so that we didn't hold some innocent person. Mm -hmm. uh, just one more question. Yeah, go ahead. How did Blake fake his own death ten years ago? Uh, well, uh, now, we don't know exactly, mm -hmm. but he, he must have done it. Uh, did you find his body in the ashes of Amelia Cardway's cottage? Hmm? Mm, well, I guess they're there, but, uh, well, it's impossible to identify them positively. Yeah, that leaves one other explanation. What's that? That Gideon Blake actually died ten years ago. <laughs> Naturally. When you get killed, don't let your murderer slice your hands off. Because then you can never put the finger on it. <laughs> Good night. Pleasant dreams. Uh -huh. mm. have been listening to an inner sanctum mystery starring Raymond Edward Johnson. Tonight's presentation in the Mystery Playhouse. At this point in our program, Peter Laurie tells me we usually go to the green room 
for a preview performance of our next Mystery Playhouse attraction. <laughs> 